Hi guys, welcome back to Jungle Flowers Canada. My name is Gronya and thanks for joining me. So today, I decided I wanted to add a jungle vibe to my Fabricor IKEA cabinet. I didn't want to go to the effort of adding the foam and all of that to it. And anyway, I don't think this type of cabinet would actually lend itself to this. So I decided to order some backing wallpaper and added just a couple of little jungly vibes to the cabinet. I did have some reservations, I'll be perfectly honest with you. So when the paper arrived, I actually just laid it across the top and hung it down the back so I could see it through the glass. And I like I really wasn't sure and I put it up actually on my local Facebook group and a lot of people said no, they didn't like it. A few said they did like it. And I was like, what should I do? So then I thought, you know what? I can put it on, if I hate it, I can just take it back off again. It wasn't really going to be that big a deal. So I decided to try it and I actually kind of like it. So I decided I would go ahead and do the second one. So I'm going to show you first off how the first one looks. And then I'm going to actually voice over the video guys, just because I'm gonna have my back to you and it'll save me from having to turn around to face the camera. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you like it. It's not going to be for everyone, I know that. Uh, but you know what, I am kind of liking it now and I did put in a new water fountain, which I'll show you at, you know me, Thrifty Grania. I did find some really good deals. So I'm gonna share all the links below of everything I used and I would like to invite you to come along with me. So let's go. Okay, so this is the one that I finished. And I will open the door and let you see it now in a moment. Hopefully you can see it better when I open. It may be hard to see with the light, but this is the paper that I put up. And then I just put back up my IKEA containers. And thankfully, this the suction re-adhered to the paper, which was great. So you can see I have my beautiful Hoyas in here. And under here I have my um, Jade Skindapsis, which I got a cutting off from my lovely plant friend Tatum. And I put it here because I know it doesn't like to be in too direct light. So we'll see how it does. And you can see I put some live moss on there. And then this container, I actually bought it in a dollar store and not Dollarama, I can't remember where I got it. And I do have a lot of wood bark, so I just added some wood bark to it. Sorry guys, there's Kieran in the background again. There is a fountain which I bought in Home Depot. I will put a link and tell you more about it as I'm doing my voiceover. And there is my philodendron to new. And if you look in here guys, I put these three plants into my little um, net pots. And then I actually just submerged them in Lekka. And they're actually doing quite nicely. And I have it in a plastic tray down there. And it actually feeds the water through a hole in the bottom. So all in all, I'm happy. But this is what we are aiming for in the other cabinet. So let's get started. Okay, so I sped this up because we really don't want to spend too much of our video watching me unpack the cabinet. So basically I'm taking out all of the beautiful plants that are in there at the moment. And I will be showing you in a moment how I take down these Ikea cap. Well, I'm just actually gonna take the back one down because that's the only one I need to remove. So you take a credit card and you just go in the back of the suction cups to release them. So guys, here is my Lacanosa green, and I didn't even realize that she had a flower, so I'm so excited to discover that. Now, get rid of that pawn. How many of you have pawn in your cabinets and you knock over a pot, and we have so much pawn down the bottom? Now I'm just gonna give it a quick clean. I'm just using Windex to clean it, and I actually clean the whole cabinet, paying attention to the back. So this is the fountain that I bought in Home Depot. I will put a link below. It's really, really cute. And then this is the wallpaper backing. So I bought this from Wish. Uh, I looked at it, it was in a couple of places and Wish was actually the cheapest. Now it did take a couple of weeks to get here, but I will put the link in the description for it. I'll also put the Amazon link in. 
Now I'm just making some rough measurements and it actually has a grid on the back which makes it easy for you to cut. So I am just cutting along the line to get it approximately the right size. Now it is adhesive backed um, and the backing paper actually comes off really easily. So that was actually, thank goodness, that was a relief. And you'll see I'm going to use a credit card to actually smooth it down. If you do have a wallpaper spatula, you could use that as well. So I just start at the top. I just partially remove some of the uh, backing and then I smooth it out firstly with my hand and then use the credit card to get out any bumps or lines. And I just basically move down doing the same the whole way down. Now, I wouldn't like it's it's adhered absolutely perfectly no issues at all but I would say it would be very easy to remove it wasn't um extremely sticky it was perfect for this situation so if I ever get tired of it I think it won't be an issue to remove it so all the way down like if you're wallpapering I love to wallpaper so um this was actually kind of fun for me and it, you should have no issues you might get an odd crease in it I did but you won't notice it because it's, you know, it's quite, I guess, fussy is what you would say. And if there are any lines in it, it should be fine. So basically, I'm just smoothing it out the whole way down, removing the backing paper, and there we have it. So I am now going to put back in all of my plants. And the best thing about this is the suction cups actually adhere to the paper. So I was kind of worried how I was going to get that back in. I thought maybe I'm going to have to glue it, but it was absolutely fine. So you can see I'm putting my fan up and I'm starting to put my lacanosa in. And I will be showing you. Oh, I have my little Quinny in the background. Do you hear? Him? It's like, Nana, pay attention to me. <laughs> I was been a very bold Nana. I'm bribing him with little cookies and I have the wiggles on just so I can get this finished. But he's now pottering around playing with his cars. So I am um, putting the plants back in, as you can see. I know the angle isn't amazing, but if I put it behind me, it would be more obstructive. So I just thought this might be better. And then I will give you a rundown of the whole cabinet in a moment. I know I'm kind of moving fast here, guys, but you will get a better view of them when the cabinet is finished. Okay, guys, now for some crafting. What would one of my videos be without a little bit of crafting? So I bought this pot. It was a dollar store, not Dollarama. I actually was up in Beaverton and I got it. But you can see there that it has a plastic bottom. So effectively, it's a self-watering pot. I think I paid like four or five dollars for it. And it does have a hole on the bottom um, where the water gets wicked in. So I just emptied out the excess pond that was there. And now I'm going to glue on the wood bark. So I have this bark because we have a fire and we, we light a lot of fires in the winter. So I just pulled the bark off the firewood that we had and I'm going to glue it onto the plastic pot just to give it a little bit more of a rustic feel. So I just use my glue gun. Now you will notice there's a little spider on here and I'm trying not to get the spider because I love spiders and I think they are so beneficial to us. So I'm waiting for him to get off of the front before I glue the piece of bark down. So here we go, nice and hot glue. And I literally just put it all over the surface and glue on my wood bark. There's nothing too difficult about this. And as I say, it just adds a nice little um, flavor to the cabinet. So just gluing on the first piece there. And then it is a little bit of a patchwork job. So you will see I have to I kind of patch it up a little bit. And then I just basically cover the, the tops of it and it's ready for my plants. Thank you. 
okay guys I'm going to do this part live so here we have my tiger tooth ring of fire I'm going to try it in palm um, and do it the same way that I did in the other cabinet so I'm just going to oh it's actually quite nicely eroded okay I got some gloves because every time I go to, to get my nails done um, my nail technician goes were you planting stuff again because there's always soil under my fingernails so I'm putting this in Lekka but if you wanted to just use soil you could just fill that container with soil and pop your plants in but I want to try these in Lekka I hope I don't regret it because look at this roots are actually beautiful if you recall I imported this from Thailand I would say about this time last year and it came with two kind of fairly big leaves and then I was um, putting the floor down in my greenhouse and I took out my vacuum and I vacuumed the two leaves off so if any of you are with me since last year you may remember this plant and then it, re it just reverted to a stump and it took forever to grow and as you can see now, the roots are beautiful and healthy. It, the growth is lovely. And she's quite happy with herself. So, like I say, I hope I don't regret this. So I'm just going to remove the, as many of the roots as I can. And then I'm going to wash the roots. Remember to put the stopper in your sink. You don't want the soil going down your, down your drain. Now, I would like it, as I did with the others, to be in a pot, and I don't have any net pots. So I'm going to get my crazy soldering iron, which I showed you before, and I'm just going to put some, whoop, some slits down the pot so the roots can come out the side. Just a few. This is so hot. So, see what I did there. We pop in our tiger tooth ring of fire, or my philodendron tiger tooth ring of fire. And then we're going to fill it up. I'm having great success with the palm, guys. The roots are just like beautiful. Some plants that I've had for like such a long time that never rooted are doing tremendously now. So, I'm very pleased with it. I've had great success. I will put a link in the description on how I made this and I made it quite economically and I did substitute the pumice um, for a very reasonable alternative so if you want to check that out go ahead and um, pop over to that video. I just put the little plastic piece back in and I'm going to layer some on the bottom I might not actually have enough I may have to go make some more I am I'm, uh, I'm actually I've run out of the charcoal so the bag of charcoal after you wash it is a lot less than all the others um, but in the meantime let's take a look at the roots on my pink princess philodendron so you can see she had a lovely pink leaf there but nothing too amazing after the fact so let's remove her from the pot and see she has oops, some lovely roots also. There she come. So she has some lovely roots also. I will do the same with her and I'll do the same with the pot that she was in. And then I will show you all of this when I am finished. So I'm going to have to get, go buy more charcoal tomorrow, guys. So just have a look there. I have the two plants in pond, and then I will fill in all around that tomorrow um, when I get the charcoal. But I bought this tray in Dollarama. Of course I did. If you watch me, you'll know how much I love that store. <laughs> and um, I don't need to take the label off. But anyway, I'll just show you what I, what I did. So there is a hole in the side of this pot. And I just set it in here. And then I, this is how I water it. So I just fill this tray up with water. It just goes above the hole there and it wicks the water up. Oh, I just knocked off a bit of my, um, bit of my bark. <laughs> I'll stick that back on. So that's basically how I did the previous one. I didn't bother putting any bark on the sides or the back because you can't really see that. 
and the other plants are doing wonderfully. So fingers crossed these will do the same. So I'm just going to continue as if I have completed this and I'll take it out again tomorrow and complete it. Okay guys, now I'm just going to fill up the reservoir of my pump with water. find a plug to plug it in because <laughs> there's so many things plugged in back here um, and then I'll just take these back out actually that's actually a Hoya Kerry ice splash that the leaves fell off but I don't know if you can see there there's some new growth points so I'm just going to sit that in the back and um, I'm not too worried about that being on display and now I'm going to take my little wood arrangement. I love living moss. I think it's so pretty. So there we are guys, it's finished and I do have a lot more of the um, moss left over but I don't want to overdo it so you can see the finished product there. I do think it's actually quite pretty. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's too much? Do you like it? Would you do it? Let's look at that peduncle again. I didn't even know that was there till then. So cute. And as I say, I do need to finish this. I'll probably put that up on Instagram. Now I haven't plugged in my fountain yet because I have to find a, a socket for it. So there we go, guys. adding a jungle vibe to my Fabricor Ikea cabinet. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something from it. And if you have any questions at all or any comments, please don't forget to ask below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to put that thumbs up. There's Penny barking, sorry about that. So if you watch till the end, don't forget to put the green heart emoji in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for coming back and I hope we will see you all again soon. You take care and have a wonderful day.